while in fact he looks more like a baboon. <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. Today we're diving back into r slash neckbeard stories. Yes indeed, continuing the lamentation of lavender and villainy story. This is actually like a little side part. It's not numbered along with the other parts of the stories. Regardless, I will link part one and two down in the description. I'm not sure what to expect from this story because it's not numbered, but I'm down to do a little side mission or something like that, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I'm definitely fascinated by this beard because despite his age, he has not changed one little bit. As a matter of fact, he has grown creepier and creepier as the stories go on. In the first story, he wanted to take his pants off for the OP. In the second story, he's asking like far too many very personal questions about OP's trans mom. And I'm sure it will only get worse, especially since it doesn't seem like this beard is going to be fired or suffer any repercussions. I'm quite curious, so I hope you're with me on this. <laughs> let's brave the depths, but first, let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some Neckbeard Stories Cringe. A Lamentation of Lavender and Villainy. Side Stories. The Tales of Horror. Horror. <laughs> TLDR. Lavender hits on a former miss in the creepiest way possible, talks to another about the wanking habits of her 12-year-old son, and then follows yet another one home. God, where's he finding all these miss whatnots? I guess he works for the government. He has access to a lot of people that he uh, shouldn't have access to. <laughs> like anyone that exists on the planet. Can we just lock him up, put him against the wall? Okay, well, I, <laughs> we're not even into the story, and I'm already frothing, so... <laughs> I'm going to dial it back and, and let's see what we got here. Hello again, my dear readers. Today I have some delicious stories for you all. I will be focusing on events that didn't happen to me, but to my colleagues. Okay, that's why it's a side story, but it's still about this beard, right? You didn't think I was the only one to be creeped on, did you? All these things happened while I was working there. I was only physically present for one of these instances, but... <laughs> I have no doubts about their authenticity. He was just that much of a creep. Some of the details have been changed as to protect the non-bearded. The cast, OP, between 24 and 26 when these stories took place. Tiny Grill likes roasting. <laughs> yeah, roast that beard. Just make sure you roast them far away from the house or you'll never get the smell out. <laughs> Neckbeard bait. Graduated from cringy weeb phase, and now a contributing, albeit openly geeky, member of society. See-through skin, ever-changing hair color, bright blue eyes, never been called beautiful, but I'm apparently adorably cute. I got called a fairy today. <laughs> I don't know why I'm sharing this, but it made me happy. Yeah, fairy, I dig it. Nice for girls, uh, very not nice for guys. <laughs> Miss Beauty, beautiful colleague, way out of Lavender Beard's league, former Miss contestant, she came in second, has a husband and a child, by the way, one of the prettiest women that I have ever met, soft-spoken, very introverted, and conservatively dressed. Susan, strong, no-nonsense colleague, who doesn't take any crap from Lavender Beard, looks like a beautiful brown-haired Viking, like if you put an axe in her hand, she would have cut Lavender Beard in two. <laughs> but she also looks like she stepped out of a fashion catalog, has a 12-year-old son, in her 30s, but she still looks 20, though. Honestly, these two make me feel like a fat little goblin. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't slam yourself, OP. There's only one real goblin in this story. A slender elf princess and a tall, graceful warrior. Queens, in their own right. And again, they do not take shit from anyone. Vanessa, not a direct colleague, but her story was told to me when we were compiling a complaint file. Probably had the worst experience with Lavender Beard to date. I still think she should have gone to the police. Uh-oh. 
30 plus year old lady, slightly broader woman with a dazzling smile, always upbeat and way too nice for her own good. And of course we've got the beard, lavender beard, the incompetent creepy stink weasel <laughs> that horrifies us all and annoys all that cross his path. Six feet tall, 60 plus years old, thin gray ass hat with eyes that don't seem to go past the halfway point. Teeny, tiny, puny peepers <laughs> that leer over any unsuspecting woman that is unfortunate enough to cross his path, struts around the office like he's king of the jungle, while in fact he looks more like a baboon, <laughs> shoving his engorged ass in anyone and everyone's face, whether they had asked for it or not. Nobody asked for that, come on. <laughs> His diabetes pump being the enlarged buttocks, for those wondering. When he was but a little weasel, he was undoubtedly bitten by a radioactive lavender plant. <laughs> Forever gaining the power of the lavender cloud. Wherever he walks, the cloud follows. It lingers anywhere he goes as a purple wave. It washes over the unsuspected and removes all love for that once so relaxing smell. <laughs> that description is so A+. Plus. God, you're getting better and better, OP. Leg bitch. Horrible boss lady that thinks women who complain about sexual harassment are just overreacting. They should learn to keep their mouth shut and act like real ladies. Short, fat, blonde ogre with a Karen haircut. <laughs> 60 plus years old. Has a smile that wouldn't even fool a blind man. Eyes that have died about the same time that her sense of humor did. <laughs> uh, asks, how are you? And answers with, that's nice, before you even have time to respond. Generally just a despicable human being. I honestly really do not like this woman. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of this story, neither will you. Considering the previous parts, I'm already quite biased against her. <laughs> She's covering up the horrors that Lavender Beard has committed. Anyways, on to the story. Side stories. The tales of horror. Uh-oh, I'm gonna butcher this. <laughs> het cantor verander. The office has changed. Que vol het an me water. I feel it in my bones. Que can't volt an min clientine. I feel it in my little toe. Que can't reaken an de lucht. I smell it in the air. Much that once was safe is lost. For none now work here who remember it. It all began with the hiring of the great beards. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, this Lord of the Rings thing. God, it's the best way to start the story. Uh, another reason I'm so hooked into the Lavender series. Three were given to the bosses. Immoral least wise, and the most fragile of all beings. <laughs> Seven victims given to the administrators, great workers and employees of the government halls, and nine complaints were filed to the men of resource, who above all else desire to do nothing. <laughs> For within these complaints was bound the strength and the will to expel the neckbeard from their mists. But they were all beards, deceived, for another mistake was made, Deep in the office of marriage, in the fires of Mount Bloom, the Dark Lord Lavender forged a purple cloud of tenure. <laughs> and into this tenure, he poured all his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. One beard to scare them all. One beard to find them. One beard to bring them all. And in the trauma... Bind them. <laughs> uh, oh, so beautiful. Part one. Hast thou washed thine cooch? <laughs> I'm dying already. It's so good. This story was told me about ten minutes after it happened. Miss B was still seething with anger as I came down from the front office for my break. A little context. Halfway through my first year, our back office moved because the floor had to be renovated. The supervisors had taken this opportunity to expel Lavender from the back office and put him into a separate room that also doubled as the lunchroom. <laughs> 
they got away with this under the nose of Leg Bitch, under the mom of giving him the job of answering calls, playing call center for an office that uh, didn't really need one. <laughs> yes, they literally created a job for him just so he wouldn't constantly bother others or screw up important files and cases. It worked a little. <laughs> Well, there was no supervisor in the back office. He'd just come in anyways. And of course, today was such a day. I came in and I heard Miss B yelling to Susan. I want him gone. Why won't they do anything? I'm so done. I'm calling my husband and he's going to beat his ass. Susan tried to calm her down, telling her that might not be the best solution and it would only end up with her husband in jail. I still kind of wish that he had done that, though. <laughs> I came up to them and asked, what happened? What do you think, asked Susan. I didn't have to ask and just said, well, what did he say? <laughs> he, yes. Miss B was almost shaking. She was so angry, I thought she might throw her laptop into Lavender's general direction. He wasn't there anymore when I entered, but by the smell of things, he had been not too long ago. <laughs> Miss B took a deep breath trying to calm herself, and began. <sighs> he sat down next to me, and I got nauseous from the smell. At first, I just told him to go away, but he ignored me and just kept talking about his photography. She air-quoted that last part. Lavender Beard's photography was usually just a collection of insects, birds, and other critters that he found mating. <laughs> The pictures were very well done, but, you know, the subject was animals humping. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, oh, he's such a weird guy. How does one beard exist this long and still stay so weird? Ugh. He was just smelling really bad today, and it was so overwhelming. The lavender is just everywhere. Miss B made a disgusted face. Stared at the seat that was close to her, probably where Lavender Beard had sat down, and she gave it a kick. The chair cheerily rolled away, blissfully unaware of the flower goblin that had been using it. <laughs> I just couldn't take it, so I told him his perfume was too much and that he should really tone it down. Yeah, because no one ever told him that, Susan smirked sarcastically. After a glare from Miss B, she shut up though. She was in a really bad mood. I don't think any of us had ever seen Miss B this mad before. Lavender had just laughed at her comment, told her that his scented oils weren't that bad, and that he smelled great. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one opinion, I guess. Then he went over a subject that he really wanted to discuss. He leaned over to me way too close, and he asked me, how often do you wash between your legs? Miss B's voice got louder as she went on. He said a woman should smell nice between her legs. His ex didn't wash herself enough down there, and he wanted to know if I smelled good because he likes a woman whose cooch smells nice. <laughs> it's really not funny. It's fucking horrifying. But <laughs> the audacity of this. <laughs> I got a laugh or I'm going to go crazy. She was screaming at this point, and me and Susan had to calm her down. We tried to remind her that this was an office, and that leg bitch was only two doors down. She usually ate in her office, but the damage was done. Leg bitch walked into the back office, looking to find where all this commotion was coming from. What's all this racket? She said with her smile not smile. <laughs> This is an office, Miss B. I didn't expect this from you. <sighs> Act like a lady. Miss B, still pissed the hell off, did not back down, though. She began the story again, a little quieter, though, <laughs> after she came to the I like a good smelling cooch part. She added this little gem. He then told me he washes himself every day, you know, down there. And that he uses essential oils on his privates as well. A pause fell, and then she exclaimed, And then he winked at me! <laughs> God. Leg bitch, I want him gone. 
Susan and I tried to agree and add to the horrors that we had to endure at the behest of this troll, but she shushed us with a literal shush. Shh! And still, deadly smiling, said, Girls, behave! This is no way for ladies such as yourself to act. Miss B, I expect you to keep your tone to a normal decibel level in the future, and I will hear no more of this. I expected better from you three. Then she left. It took everything I had not to go and fucking strangle her. <laughs> After we got over the initial shock and had ranted enough about the umbrage double that ruled our tiny kingdom, I turned back to Miss B. So, what did you say to him? Miss B, I screamed at him. I told him I would send my husband after him if he ever talked to me again and to get the hell away from me. She grinned a little. I might have threatened to stab him with my pen, too. <laughs> <laughs> She seemed to cheer up a bit about the idea of stabbing Lavender repeatedly with her tiny weapon, and it cheered me up too, honestly. <laughs> After her outburst, Lavender had apparently gotten up and walked away, talking about sensitive women, and that she was obviously on her period. The fact that Miss B did not stab him is astounding to me. This woman has patience. <laughs> Poor Miss B. Maybe the verbal evisceration should have been a little bit more, but my god, where does this guy get off? Like, I like a woman who washes her coos? Well, you don't gotta worry about it, bro. You ain't never gonna get that close. Jesus. She should have stabbed him for real. <laughs> and we'll get into story two. Has thine offspring burped his worm yet? <laughs> what? <laughs> burped his worm. Oh, it's a masturbation euphemism. <laughs> I thought about burping like a giant wormy baby or something. That's a little more innocent than the reality. <laughs> this instance happened only a few weeks after the previous one. It's also the reason why Lavender is now slightly terrified of Susan. See, where Miss B can get angry, Susan can go full berserker. Lavender maybe thought he would get away with his antics with what in his eyes was uh, just a woman on her period like he did with miss b but susan is every bit the shield maiden that she looks to be and this scented ball of snot <laughs> was smart enough to bring her child into this yep dem's killing words not just fighting words just like in part one i just came from the front office to the floor where our back office was to eat my lunch the elevator hadn't even opened enough for me to get out yet when I heard the thunderous, raging screams. How dare you! You disgusting piece of shit! You vile little man! Susan's voice carried all the way down the hall. I hurried over as I heard her telling the beard off in every way that she could. You stay away from me, you hear? If you ever mention my son again, I will break every fucking bone in your pathetic little body! I halted at the door just long enough to see Susan almost hit Lavender. Her hand whooshed past his face. She obviously had intended to hit him, but had been able to restrain herself at the very last second. Lavender cowered back. He may be tall and even a scary man in my eyes, but Susan was well over six feet and had the perfect combination of muscles and curves. A Scandinavian Amazon, if you will. She towered over him, making him look like the small little rodent that he was inside. <laughs> and all her rage was directed at this ever-slinking, wilting lavender ball. Ah, oh, if looks could kill, he would still be writhing on the floor to this day because those eyes were not just angry. They were filled with rage and unbridled hatred. He would not get an easy death. <laughs> Not this stinkweed that had dared talk about her son. Do not speak to me! Do not talk to me! Get out of this office! You aren't even allowed in here! Get out before I remove you via the other exit! And she pointed at the window. <laughs> Lavender, idiot that he is, thought to use the same tactics that he had used for Miss B, and wanted to get the last word in while he walked to the door. 
Me, realizing that he was coming straight at me, quickly jumped inside the office, walked to a nearby desk, and planted myself on top of it. Just sitting back to enjoy the show. <laughs> uh, you women are so easily offended. What are you on, your period or something? This was a mistake. <laughs> a very delicious mistake. Susan, who had deflated a little when he started to walk to the door, now swelled up again. She practically stormed at him and halted two centimeters from his face. See how he liked it. She blocked his path and whispered, What did you say to me? She was menacingly terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Seuss is cool. She don't take no shit for realsy reels. Lavender, who had just been red from anger, now turned pale white with fear. He started stuttering, falling over his words and stumbling backwards. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to. I mean, that's not... It's just... A, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Susan took a step to the side, still eyeing him intently, and let him scramble back to his cave. <laughs> to his credit, or maybe on orders of one of the supervisors, he did apologize to Susan, but she never talked to him again unless it was absolutely necessary. Lavender, on his end, started groveling to Susan any chance that he got, trying to get back into her good graces. And of course, he never did, as he shouldn't. <laughs> Talk about my kid. That's a death warrant. Susan has a very specific set of skills. I will find you, and I will kill you. <laughs> I let Susan calm down a bit first, before I finally asked her what the hell had happened. Lavender had flat out walked up to her while she was talking to some co-workers about their kids, and while showing them a picture of her son. How old is your son? Twelve, Susan said. Uh, does he masturbate yet? <laughs> oh, God damn it. Why? What? Oh, God damn, dude. I don't know what to do with this guy. That has some terrifying undertones to it, okay? And thankfully, everybody else in this office was just as horrified as I am because the entire conversation ended. In fact, every conversation in the back office abruptly ended. Excuse me? Susan asked. Maybe she misunderstood. You know, has he janked off yet? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> he does not know when to stop. Lavender then proceeded to tell a too shocked to respond Susan about his first time. Yes, all about the first time that Lavender Beard had tugged his noodle. At the age of eight, apparently. That was information that we all could have done without. And now you guys are all included in this waking nightmare. But of course, Lavender Beard did not just end it there. See, Lavender has two sons. They're all grown up now, and I cannot imagine the youth that these two poor children must have endured, especially after this story, because he not only told Susan about his own first experience, he told her about both of his sons' first experiences too. I don't know how he knew this, I'm pretty sure I don't want to know, but it is horrifying to think about. Oh, god damn. Are those kids okay? Are they functional members of society? You can have them hit me up. I'll foot the bill for the therapy, all right? This is about the part where Susan regained her ability to respond and exploded. And I made my way downstairs just in time to see shit hit the fan. Jesus, dude, Lavender might have a darker side than any of us know about. Like, he's already a really creepy and horrible person, but kids, man, leave them fucking kids alone, especially his own kids. I, I can't I can't even think about that too much. I'm just going to fucking rage quit on the video. So we'll just push on into part three and hopefully uh, I can get over that. Ugh. I know where thine abode resides. Oh, great. <laughs> This story is a little bit different than the other two because I wasn't there at all. Vanessa just told this to me when I and some co-workers started compiling a file on Lavender Beard. All of our grievances together in one big complaint. 
and we all read each other's stories. The two written above here and my previous Lavender stories were among them, and this is how I came to read Vanessa's story. Can we get a copy of that complaint file? Can we, like, <laughs> have endless Lavender Beard stories? I mean, I'm horrified, but again, I'm really fascinated, too. Anyways, we were all sitting at a table in the conference room. There were seven of us in total. Vanessa's, honestly, was the scariest one for me. It wasn't very long, but it showed me just how scary Lavender Beard could get. See, Lavender Beard had asked Vanessa, uh, Where in our city she lived? She, of course, stayed vague and just gave the general area. He'd been visiting her a lot and obviously fancied her. She, just like Miss B, was married. So one day she was talking with a friend at work about her street, and she happened to mention the name. This is when she noticed Lavender jolt past the door of her office. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> she wasn't sure if he had heard her, but that evening while she was cooking, she looked through her window. Oh no, dude. Goosebumps. A window that looked out onto the street and saw him. Oh my god, dude. This is terrifying. He was walking from house to house, peering through windows, looking for Vanessa. She quickly ducked down and called her husband. She told us at the table that she literally hid behind her husband until Lavender Beard had passed by. What the fuck, dude? That is so terrifying. The day after this incident, he casually told her that he had passed by her street, but hadn't seen her. Where did she live again? She told him that it was none of his business but never told him that she had seen him. She was terrified, and rightly so. She also didn't report it. Nothing really happened, so there was nothing to report, right? Right? <laughs> All of us compiled our complaints and handed it to a supervisor who wanted him gone just as much as we did. She, in turn, gave it to Legbitch. We never heard about it again. But here is where my disdain for this wrinkled blonde toad really sets in. Legbitch retired a few months after this. This witch, this Cheshire cat wannabe, did one last despicable act before she left. She erased Lavender's complaint file. Oh god, why does she keep protecting him? I don't understand. Are they banging on the side? That's my working theory at the moment. I learned this on my last day at the office last week. Every complaint over the last 30 years about Lavender have just disappeared. They've vanished into thin air. So we'll never get more stories <laughs> from that file. I mean, that's not the part that I should be the saddest about, but maybe she was trying to, like, cover her tracks or something like that because she had covered for Lavender Beard so much that as soon as another supervisor gets hired on or whatever, they're going to look at that file and be like, what the hell? <laughs> this dude should have been fired like 20 times at least. And that speaks to her own incompetence. God, there are just so many questions that I have. I don't understand at all. The vile goblin of a woman had decided to throw out not only our horrendous experiences with Lavender out of the window, but every complaint about him ever. I got told this by the new boss, who I sent my official complaint letter about Lavender to. She was shocked about what she read, and horrified and angry that Legbitch never did anything with these complaints. Well, the truth always comes out, I suppose, but yeah, just a little bit too late in this case. However, given the fact that most of these are from before the pandemic, they aren't relevant anymore. Yes, they are. <laughs> and can't be used to fire him. She now has to wait for him to harass another woman before anything can be done. Ugh, so exhausting. Bureaucracy in action. The poor next victim. I'm sure there will be one. Lavender Beard just can't seem to help himself. Anyways, thank you everyone for reading. I know it's a very long post. Once again, I do not apologize for it. <laughs> also, English is not my first language. If you find any errors or phrasing mistakes, please don't hesitate to correct me. After all, how else am I going to learn? I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next post.
Oh, man, this is so not a normal work environment. This is so toxic and so horrible, and it's all being covered up because the big boss knows that if any of this came out, then there would be a lawsuit. And I know Americans get a rap for being, like, pretty lawsuit happy, but <laughs> I think anybody with eyes can see that this is beyond the fucking pale, isn't it? He asks OP, do you have pictures of your parents banging? Asks Miss B if she washes her coos. Asks Susan if she her 12-year-old son has polished the bishop. Like, what is going on here? And I do agree that the cherry on top of this horrible, terrible, creepy Sunday is Lavender walking down this woman's street after he heard it mentioned in passing and looking in people's fucking windows. Oh my god. What are the gun laws like in your country, OP? <laughs> <laughs> That's always my solution. Like I say, you don't even have to shoot it. Just wave it at him. He ain't gonna come back. That's for damn sure. And if uh, you can't get a gun, then, I don't know, taser, pepper spray, maybe a nice rubber police baton or something. <laughs> I'm definitely glad that Lavender Beard did not spot Vanessa before she spotted him and she was able to hide and all that because I cannot imagine if he actually knew where she lived and how the story would devolve from and how that situation would affect the story. Probably horribly. Probably I don't even want to think about it. Jesus Christ. We got one more Lavender Beard story to go. I'll probably get it up within the next few days. I'm really hoping that he has some sort of repercussions at the end of all this because he does not deserve anything. <laughs> I was going to say deserve to be free or deserve to be happy or we'll, we'll take it so far as to say deserve to be breathing. <laughs> I absolutely hate this man. And at 60 years old, you definitely know better. I think he just gets off on saying like the wildest shit to unsuspecting women. There's something seriously wrong inside of his brain. So Dr. Redex's suggestion, we have to ventilate his skull. Just like one or two holes about nine millimeters around. <laughs> <laughs> That'll fix it too. <laughs> God damn. It's horrible. It's cringy. But yeah, I can't get enough. For what a happy go lucky person I am, there's just some part of me that thrives on cringe. It's a very weird dichotomy. But I do hope that you guys enjoy it. And if you did enjoy this video, I hope you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. Check out them links in the description. Yes, indeed. All kinds of playlists and plugs and also my social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Come on through. Say hey to me. I also want to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons like I do every video. So thank you very much. Calvicus, Fatboy Shrimp, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Aaron W., Twisted Child, Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Livison, Mr. Anime Manga Fan, Silent Revolver, Zero MMX, Magdalene Marshall, Thorn Road, Cherish Kitsune, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Tower, Satori, Babsy Coon, Caustic Fox, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, OG James Cook, A Pimp Named J Crisp, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Miss Monday, Lexi Love Jojo, Lord Lion O, Jack It's Rule, Melgar the Destroyer, Mirthful Baker, Mr. J, My Boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nix, or Gaming Steve, Katie Kins, Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Dash, Siegfried, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, Teddy the Police, Ten Ton Monster, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Treeberg, Will Max, Redwin, Goose Has Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, Saints Blessing, John Indoors, A Normal Joe, Amara, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, That's a Different Jerry, <laughs> California Keto Girl, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, KJW, Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Little Ann Woods, A R O P, thank you so much, times two today. Mark 211, maybe next time, Milkfed, Gimp, Miss Duchess, Orgamic Cam, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, Raptor, Art, Ellie, The Last Shinobi, and The Neck Row Bamakan. <laughs> Thank you guys all so much for supporting the channel in the way that you do. It means the world to me. I hope some other people will consider signing up on the Patreon, but if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, guys. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Like, uh, watching some more Red X videos, if in you want. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.